Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. as well as the sequel slash sister show Heroes Reborn. I'm Loaf, and on the hunt for me for special slash evils is... It's Ricky. Hey, how's it going? (laughs) (laughs) Our first discussion today is episode 313, Duel. And let me tell you just from a little bit of trivia off the top, this episode went through a lot of name changes, and I can't believe that we actually ended on Duel, as in D-U-A-L instead of (sighs) D-U-E-L. opportunity anyway uh let's just get right into the recap uh this episode was written by jeff Loeb. i think this is one of his last episodes actually and directed by look for the pan the close-up the extreme close-up in pans greg beeman uh do you have a synopsis for us after the death of arthur the petrelli brothers find themselves against each other and nathan makes a move that will have re- repercussions on the world Sila holds claire noah meredith and angela hostage beginning a face-off at primatech Ando, Matt, and Daphne continue their attempts to rescue Hero from the past, and Mahinda may be their only hope of achieving it. Um, the only other major plot points and players that I guess we should discuss is Knox and Flint help Peter to destroy the formula, uh, Tracy saves Nathan, and then the hunt for evolved humans begins. Woo! <laughs> but wait! Not so fast. <laughs> We've got to get through Not this episode. Not your heroes reborn just yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, important places, people, or things, ability supercharging, and ability replication. Hmm. Ability supercharging obviously is a hint at Ando. His ability turns into something else, too, though, so it's kind of weird, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, who do you want to start with in the recap? Ugh. Of the we might as well just do it in in places. So we'll start with Primatech first, I guess, because you know that's no. Actually, let's start with uh, Pinehurst because that's a lot more boring than Primatech. Primatech at least has kind of got some a bit of action. So yeah, let's start with. So <clears throat> in oh, at the end of the last episode, we kind of have had. Um, Peter and Nathan kind of starting the face off with Peter kind of knocking out Nathan and then he makes his way to where the formula is and he's faced off with Mohinder who to be fair he should be pretty angry with at this moment because the last time they met he was trying to use him as a human guinea pig (laughs) and uh, he just goes around trying to destroy the formula and then all of a sudden Knox and Flint help him out because with the formula they won't be so special anymore which kind of makes sense but you know why were they only thinking about that now did they just not think that it was ever going to happen who knows well with arthur dead you know the his dream is dead they don't trust nathan and they're like that's the smartest thing those two ever decided (laughs) fair enough um so yeah we have nathan being watched by being watched by Knox and flint helping peter so yeah uh, Knox is taken out pretty swiftly by a well first by a paperweight uh, with Nathan <laughs> and then uh, being frozen by L L Tracy Tracy the <laughs> other other blonde yes <laughs> and then yeah they make a they kind of do they make a run for it no Tracy makes a run for it. She she just straight up at the end of the episode you just see her pull up and get more. She she's looking thirsty. She's like, hey, 
you big tall drink of water, get in the car. <laughs> Although she should be terrified of him at this point, because the last time she saw him, he cocooned her ass. Exactly. But, you know, we forget about these things quite quickly, don't we? Uh, the writers do. Exactly. <laughs> and Peter ends up destroying most of the formula, throwing it on the ground, and for some reason, just by being able to touch Mohinda, that makes his scales go away and kind of sets his powers at what they are. <clears throat> Sorry. And yes, all of a sudden. Really? Yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah, I think that's what happened. That's why he his power like he didn't get injected, did he? He No, he didn't. I never really I was like, oh, so the power of Peter? <laughs> <laughs> Double entendre. Sorry. <laughs> and then um Peter and well in the ensuing scuffle, of course, Mohinda has to say the words be careful of the formula, it's highly flammable. And, of course, Peter and Nathan are having their little Barney. And Flint... Um, I don't... I have a problem with the formula being flammable. <laughs> Why? I mean, this is this is basically biochemistry that we're talking about. Especially, like, stuff secreting from the adrenal glands and stuff like that. I don't think there's, like, phosphorus or stuff like that. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, sure, because plot point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Flint starts to destroy... Well, he sets the place on fire. Obviously, Peter, being the one who was destroying most of the formula, is so absolutely rubbish at his job that he finds one of the vials, injects himself runs at his brother and they fly out as the place explodes. So yes. Ugh. I know. Why did he have to save Nathan? Why? <laughs> all this could have been avoided if we didn't save Nathan is all that I'm saying. Well you know he's always gonna save Nathan even when he dies, but yeah. <laughs> um the only things I've really got to bring up is Nathan is obviously deep in the Kool-Aid drinking phase once again. But he's kind of taken it and refined what um, his father wanted to do. Um, and they kind of bring up that, you know, he's kind of jealous of Peter because Peter was always the one given chances and, like, Nathan was the one who kind of had to work to get where he is. Um, is that what you saw? I think that's what he said. And but at the end of the day, Nathan has been all over the place this season, you know, in terms of character. You know, he, he died. He came back to life. He was really religious for a minute. He wanted to help humanity. And then he wanted to really help humanity by, you know, policing them. And, yeah. Dude, do you realize this all happened over 13 episodes? Do you know exactly. how crazy that's? Like, like, I can see if that was, like, over the course of the series. But literally, one half of a season. That's this guy's character arc. Exactly. That's insane. Oh, man, it is. And the fact that they kind of keep on bringing it up kind of fills me with a bit of joy because, you know, they're not just, like, forgetting it. But at the same time, he was religious for, what, about three episodes? And, yeah, he he wanted to help... Hum he wanted to save humanity, and then he wanted to help... And by help, I'm, you know, I'm using that term loosely. Humanity within the span of an episode, you know? But that's... You know who Nathan is? Who? He's freaking Dr. Manhattan from <laughs> Watchmen. <laughs> Only without, uh, only not blue. He got the power of flying, so yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know. What can you do? Heroes, yeah. logic. <laughs> Fail. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't really have much to say about anything else about the kind of Pinehurst part of it, because Peter's kind of just straight down the middle, um, you know, destroying stuff and saving his brother, and that's all that really he happens. He injects himself. Yeah. And also, isn't it like Ando and like Ma like Matt and Daphne are like trying to figure stuff yeah, out? Yeah, let's move on and to Daphne them. Daphne like the last Yeah, Because that's still technically a Piner's kind of sort of. I guess. <laughs> For one brief shiny moment, I guess, was the connecting bridge. <laughs> They're really at Suresh's loft. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. So... What happens? So, they basically realise that they have to get hero back from the past and the only way that they can think of it is to give someone powers uh, because they don't really know any other time travelers and i don't know if this was something that kind of they were going to carry on carry on with but they daphne kind of brings up you know that 
our power is part of someone's personality because you got Matt who always cared about what people thought about him that kind of gave him the powers of um, telepathy and you had Daphne who always you know who had cerebral palsy and always wanted to run and she got the power of like you know, super speed, and Peter was always... And they also brought that up with Flint, yeah. and I like, this is what I, I kind of brought that up a couple of episodes ago, too, but yeah. I kind of have a theory about the male power specifically. Maybe it is encoded on the Y chromosome, and that's why some of the males have, like, that exact kind of power that their father has. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get all scientific. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what else? You got Peter, who was empath- empathic, so he obviously got that power, Tracy His was, mom had yeah, sort of. I guess, yeah. And Tracy was, you know, quote unquote, the ice queen. Ugh. And um, you just love that phrase, don't you? I know, you? I love it. <laughs> and they obviously managed to get a vial of the formula and bring it back to Ando. And they realize that, you know, he injects himself. Obviously, Ando's been working out for this exact moment because he is buff. <laughs> that shirt is tight. And yeah, um, he. <laughs> He injects himself, collapses, wakes up, and he has the power of supercharging, which kind of makes him a super sidekick, which he's always kind of been. But yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. they figure out that obviously he's got that power and that if he connects himself, well, if he charges up Daphne, they can go back in time and get Hero, which they do whilst Hero is having a fight with his father about the formula. And yeah. <laughs> yes, he, um, you know, ends up with the formula going, getting split in half, which is obviously what we get now. Um, and yeah, they end up with Hero back in the present day with, does he have the formula? He doesn't. No, he doesn't because it gets left on the floor. Yes, the but he gains, he gets the formula in the present day, like the current incarnation. Yeah, with formula, Daphne. And uh destroys it by ripping it up into more smaller pieces so yeah he's kind of done what he his first initial quest was which was to protect the formula and by protect i mean destroy so yeah why didn't they do that in the first place um, <laughs> it, it's it's crazy hero's logic is crazy but anyway yeah so the next chunk of our episode takes place at private good old private tech. what did you think of what did you think of Ando getting powers? I was here for it. Like, when they teased that and how he killed Hero earlier in the season, I was like, what? Mm. And then we see that it's the same exact power, and you're yeah. like, this could still happen. It's in play. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was excited. It's is... better than the Mohinder getting powers. Yes, storyline. definitely. Um, there is something else I wanted to bring up that Mohinder says himself that you know, when he started seeing people with powers and seeing how they grew, he kind of coveted the powers and that's kind of why he... I think that's obviously what pushed him into injecting himself with the formula in the first place. But yeah. I, I thought it was to go with... Because we're dealing with, like, quintessential sci-fi, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That's yeah. how I figured they uh, justified him wanting to, you know, from the good doctor to, to this bad man with powers that will do whatever he needs to do at all costs to keep his power. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> Sounds better than what I said, but yeah. Um, so we'll move on to Primatech. Oh, Primatech. Uh, oh, God, why? Yeah. Why'd they do this to us, Ricky? I know, right? Um, how far, like, I don't know geography that well, but how far is it from New Jersey to New York? Is it that far? Oh, it's not that far uh depending on what where they were to like the city yeah uh it's probably like a good three hour car ride oh fair enough because obviously you know sila kills um sila kills arthur and then the next minute he is at primatech so yeah um once again sila's uh traveling across across uh state lines really really quickly comes up again just like at the beginning of the season um so yeah it's that was really fast I know, right? <laughs> from New York to California. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sila is basically playing with his prey at this point. He has everyone locked in Primatech and he is hunting them. Um, HRG decides to kind of, you know, of course, this being heroes, you've got a team of four people against one. The best thing to do is kind of split up, obviously, because, you know, that's what they do in heroes. Um, Angela and... Claire are in one team and 
Meredith and HRG are in another. HRG comes up with the idea to get rid of, uh, well, not get rid, but to open up the doors to level five, let three people out, which are Danny Pine, Doyle, and Echo, who, if you've watched the webisodes, you will know who he is. Um, I literally tweeted out, like, hey, there's yeah. Echo! I know, right? Oh, there he is. Oh, no, he's dead. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, they He basically uses them as bait to kind of get Sila out. Um, yes. Sila then, you know, outsmarts them because, you know, he's super smart. Um, they kind of pay off the adrenaline thing with him injecting Meredith in the heart with adrenaline, locking her in a cell and locking HRG in with them. I believe I might have skipped out Sila having uh, issues with um, Angela and just, you know, asking if he was her son and she says she wishes he was because she was always disappointed with her kids. But that's a lie, I think. But yeah, she just wanted to manipulate him. He was easy to manipulate. Um, so yeah, we get that. And then Claire goes and saves um, Daddy by jumping through a window, basically. <laughs> and then Meredith overloads and blows up the place whilst... Talk about Claire killing, uh, well, disabling Siler. Oh, yeah. Yes, just before, you know, just before um, Meredith blows up, Sila, oh, Claire grabs a shard of glass and stabs it in the back of his head, and disabling him, and, you know, he stays there, and they run, hear her and, um, and HRG run off slow motion whilst the place blows up behind them. So, yeah, it's just like a, just like a Michael Bay movie. I have glossed I it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, um, so, volume three basically ends with Claire, Noah, and Angela watching Primatech burn. Well, okay, so Hero and Daphne go to steal the formula from Tracy. Tracy got the formula by uh, freezing the <laughs> Arthur Safe. Yeah. Long story short, she says something very racist and derogatory. Hero ain't having none of that and punches her straight up in the face. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before he punches her out in the. F- Punches her he says face. sorry. He says sorry, bows, then punches her in the face. Still punching <laughs> a chick in the face, no matter if you say sorry or bow or not, dude. All right, though. Um, yeah. Um, so, what do I have to really say about this? Uh, oh, wait, we got to talk about the prologue. Oh, well, the epilogue. It's well, I... volume four, begins three weeks later with Nathan meeting, quote unquote, someone in a limousine in Washington, D.C., and they're talking about. Uh, specials and what you know getting the government involved and we see the files of Tracy and I'm like that's cold blooded bro <laughs> like the Ohander Matt Hero and he's like oh there's so many more and he's like uh, we're gonna lock them up so they won't be a danger to anybody and then he says thank you Mr. President and I go discount Obama is discount <laughs> but it's Worf it's Worf from Star Trek so you know they've got another Star Trek member in the cast for one episode, so yeah. Uh, oh, for like 10 seconds? I know, right? So what do I have to say about the whole Primatech thing? Um, they kind of explain more about Sila. Like, he's a bad guy with kind of intent, but he's he's always blaming others. But ultimately, it's just his own self-hatred of being a, I'm a monster. But yeah, he's always blaming other people for it. But, you know, deep down inside, you know, there's always going to have been something in there that, just needed to be triggered. Um, I do like that Angela. <laughs> Angela's just so cool, calm, and collected when she's in his presence. At this point, um, you know he's he's better, basically threatening to kill her. She's like, yeah, you know, I I just played on your needy. Your need. You're a needy child, and you had parent issues. I just played on that. So yeah, Angela, as per usual, being a to quote Big Bang Theory, needy baby, greedy baby. Yeah, <laughs> and. We also get another kind of small kind of inkling between, well, not uh, a kind of fracture, I guess, kind of between Claire and HRG, because, you know, what episode would it be without there being some kind of tension between them? Um, Honestly, I wanted him to shoot Meredith right between the eyes. Like, (laughs) let's just keep it real. That would have been a better way for her to go out. Um, Yeah, I, I don't even know if, you know, that they would necessarily 
die from fire because obviously she survived it before. Um, but a building falling on top of you, that's something different. So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, Noah's obviously... I don't know what it is, but like Noah's using these guys as bait. Um, and, you know, he's kind of being exposed here at this point for, you know, just the way that he sees people with powers because he just sees them as bait for Scylla at this moment. And I see it kind of being hypocritical because obviously him and Scylla, like they're killers, but it, it's not okay for them just to be used as bait. Um, yeah, I guess. And I kind of like the fact that he doesn't even pick up Claire when she jumps through the window. He just rushes straight out, <laughs> which obviously, you know, tells us what we need to know. <laughs> and Yeah, in his heart of hearts. Yes. And Claire finally kills Scylla, which kind of puts an end to that kind of storyline. But, you know, obviously being Scylla and the cockroach that he is, he will find a way to survive. Okay, nitpick. Yeah. Can I just... Okay, so, like, after Hero and Daphne have redeemed themselves and destroyed the formula, they go back to Mohinder's Law, and they're kind of celebrating, and off to the side, who the frack do we see? Ooh, Sutu. Looking yes. off. And you're <laughs> like, what? Oh, God. That makes its way into the next series, the next volume, but we'll talk about it that. It gets abruptly dropped as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Saving graces, saving graces. Oh, this this episode is a mess. I know. Um, the only thing that I kind of, uh, I kind of like that it's the Merediths who, who are ultimately at fault for destroying Pinehurst and Primatech. You know, Flint's the one who destroys Pinehurst, and Meredith, Meredith, the Gordons. Yeah. Sorry, the Gordons, <laughs> the Merediths, <laughs> Flint, Meredith, and Meredith, yeah. and Meredith, Meredith. Um, Meredith is the one who destroys Primatech. So, yeah. What did you think about all the whole Scylla? Um, I thought and... it was stupid. Yeah? <laughs> I thought it was so stupid. I'm like, why are we, like, is it really? Scylla doesn't have bigger fish to fry at this point. And he, like, was being so creepy with Claire. And we'll see this again. It's not going to be the last time. we got at least three more times. Wasn't this the one <sighs> where they have the uh, the spanking quote? Yes! Yeah. It is. I'm like, he might like that. <laughs> just, ugh. Like, I just don't like it. Like, I, I just, I don't know. Like, it just didn't feel like it was Siler to me. I kind of think it was because obviously he still holds a grudge against Angela for the whole, um, you know, lying to him. But he also, obviously, because of the retcon in this season, he obviously holds HRG accountable for everything that's happened to him as well because. He made him into a monster. And a monster. Just, we're just gonna forget about Papa Suresh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's out of it. Now how it's... we forgot about Mohinder <laughs> <laughs> and his actual characterization and how none of that really made sense. Yeah. Fine. Absolutely destroyed him in this season. <laughs> and never really bothered to redeem him, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Maybe Heroes Reborn, we have a chance for it. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, yes. So. I think I'm all done with everything I needed to say. You? No, oh, definitely. Let's get into the review. Best character? Best character, I will probably go with... Um, I am probably going to go with... I don't know. You go first. <laughs> no. I'm going to go with Angela, because she handles every situation like a boss. <laughs> Unfazed, unaffected, blasé, bourgeoisie, bourgeois. <laughs> <laughs> just whatever like I love it just it, like I love her line about her son's were disappointments because I could totally agree with that <laughs> I kind of want to go with Parkman because you know he kind of brings up some interesting points with the whole powers thing like um when he's talking to them he's like when he's talking to like because obviously Daphne and um Daphne and Ando are just all up like yeah yeah we'll just go back into the past and he's like well, you know, what if you go back too far? What if you do this? What if you do that? And they're just like, yeah, anyway. And they just do it anyway. He's back to poor Parkman just being stepped on. But yeah, you know, I thought he kind of had some valid points that no one really listened to. Sometimes people should just listen to him. But not in the next season, because he's a doo-doo head in the next volume. But yeah. <laughs> Big fat doo-doo head on top of that. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, so. Best character in action. 
I'm going to go with uh, Angela and Sila because obviously, you know, she's just bossing him about and he's just trying to, you know, he's just trying to get what he wants. But, you know, she just doesn't give an inch. She doesn't like um, kowtow to him being a scary monster. She's just like, well, you know, I just used you. And she just doesn't care about what's going to happen. So, yeah. I agree to an extent but I also like the Peter and Nathan quote unquote parting of ways it's finally like Peter actually gets it it's like Nathan would not do the same for you yeah so it's like that kind of has just finally like he's finally set it out in the open like no bones about it no other way to take it mm. and it just that definitely needed to happen yeah definitely especially with what's coming but yeah I think yeah 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 <laughs> best scene best scene I am probably going to go with I kind of like the ending because it's it's intriguing as to where it's going to go and I kind of like I, it, as much as like the next as much as like Nathan's been kind of going all over the place I kind of can see where he's going with this kind of policing of specials that he's wanting well he's not even wanting policing but you know capturing of specials because you know some of them are quite you know powerful and the company hasn't really been doing a good job in those past two seasons. So, yeah, it's about time the government stepped in. But, yeah, <laughs> how about you? Ah, this is brutal. But I'm just going to say, like, just when you don't know what, what's going to happen, like, it, it's a small scene. But it's like Scott, you know, the Marine from last episode is yeah. the only one that, like, injected. And, like, he gets sent by Tracy to check on Nathan. And then, like, Max just appears and snaps his neck. <laughs> and it was just like, welp! <laughs> like, just, okay. The, the, the formula is completely officially dead now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, any lines? Uh, oh, Nathan to Peter. Sooner or later, you're going to have to choose a side. And he literally never did. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, you are not my mother, are you? I can tell if you're lying. No, I'm not. For a brief moment, I wish you were. Oh, Sila just wants a mummy. <laughs> oh, oh, what up you? You saw me as a hero. Angela, she makes the, the, the worst <laughs> face I've ever seen. She's like, no, no. As a killer, a monster, you were flawed, weak, and valuable. Someone I could manipulate. Because that's what I do. And I'm like, she knows what yes. the fans say about her. <laughs> um, but you're right. I'm a monster too. And I was just like, damn. <laughs> so, uh, grades. What are you going to grade this bad boy? Um, Actually, this one is definitely a C. Yeah. I, I agree with that. You know, as much as, you know, this season's kind of been all over the place. At least they're kind of... If this was like a season finale, at least they kind of gave you some kind of action um, and some kind of destruction for once. You know, you've got both Pinehurst and Primatech basically out of the running from what I can see. And yeah, you've got the the threat, I guess, of the government in the next volume. So yeah. How... Yeah, it, it was average. And it's, I was like, I mean, like if this was... I don't know like it felt i felt weird about like doing the volumes this way this was a really weak volume but yeah. i was glad that everything got destroyed but at the same time it's like what really happened <laughs> like that could have could have been easily so easily prevented like this formula situation the more that i think about it the more it gives me a headache mm, definitely yeah well you know we're done with this volume now yeah yay, yay! <laughs> No confetti, it's a parade! <laughs> um, bl bits of trivia I have are, obviously, uh, Flint has a cut on his face which resembles the symbol, because that's still a thing. Um, you think that's going to be a thing in Heroes Reborn? I, Do you want it to be a thing? I, I wouldn't mind, but I don't want it to be like that. I kind of like the the ones that kind of were in the background. Like there was like one the sword and the like yellow pages thing. And... Yeah, I even like the one that was like you know in the pool in like what the second episode I think there was like all the the um there was like at the Walker household hold Matt was like standing by the pool and it was like done with like the the floats like there was a rope oh. and then there was like some floats. I like those kind of ones, not like cuts or. 
like there was the one where um peter destroyed the the shanty and virus then and then it became the thing as well or claire's cut became it and then it healed up i don't like those ones those ones seem a bit i like the ones that you kind of have to seek it out but yeah um and according to greg beeman's blog the episode f was filmed in october 28 2008 before the U.S. presidential election, Beeman said that Tim Kring, Tim Kring really wanted to cast an African-American in the role of the president, even though at the time it was quite uncertain how the election would turn out. So, yes. Um, that was kind of risky. Mm. But I guess they could have just pretended like they were in the 24 universe and had... I guess. They should have got Dennis Hasbrook. That's who they <laughs> should have got. But I guess they were going with the Star Trek uh, alum. Yes. Thing. But they've always been kind of risky with what they kind of do, haven't they? Like, the... The whole kind of 9-11 thing and the terrorism kind of thing in season one and where they go to in kind of season uh, yeah. into volume four. Yeah, it definitely into season uh, the second half of the volume. But like 9-11 was a little bit far removed. And at that point, I just found it kind of cheesy and whole uh, schmaltzy to keep using that imagery. And I feel the same way when I see movies doing it right now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about uh, Hard Knocks, the webisode? Yeah, why not? Let's get through this really. Basically, the Hard Knock series was originally filmed um, as scenes intended for the episode villains, but they were cut due to time restrictions and later released on NBC.com. So, yeah, basically, uh, we have part one, which is called Choices, and it has Knox and Parkman. They kind of know each other, uh, kind of like how Parkman was meant to know a mead back in like season one. Um, and by season one, I mean uh, the original the pilot. Yeah, yeah. Knox is trying to get out the game and his powers kind of manifest. He just doesn't know what his powers kind of entail at the moment. He just knows that he kind of has strength. So, yeah, that's the first part. The second part is called Get Straight. It's got Knox trying to figure out how his powers kind of work. Knox kind of thinks that Parkman is kind of using Knox to kind of advance him in his career. And at the same time, he's being watched by his gang who basically kind of know that he kind of wants to get out the game and they obviously assume you know that he's going to be a snitch um the next episode is called fear which is where he realizes that his powers are from fear but i think that kind of also links into the fact that you know um the adrenal gland thing that they kind of brought up in season in, in volume three and he ends up just like killing his uh his big boss or the main man um with his usual punching straight through them and the last episode is called The Main Man Now, where Knox thanks, basically, Parkman for making him stand up for himself. And he's basically the, the main man now. So, yeah. Wait, wait, no. It, it's funny because Parkman has, like, gotten kicked down to a traffic cop yes. and then, like, Knox rides by. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, now I remember. Um, yeah. That's basically it. What did you... Did you watch the, the webisodes or did you... I, I did. They were not memorable for the The only ones that were really memorable were the Doyle ones. And ironically, it's the ones you can't freaking find online. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's understandable why this was cut. Because nothing much really nothing. happens. And it doesn't really... It doesn't... Like, if you think about it in context, context to the episode villains, it kind of is that kind of storyline that's out on its out on the side that kind of doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the sh of the episode so yeah it's fair enough why they cut it out so yeah oh you want to know something else that ticked me off Word. about this episode Tyler had the nerve to do opening narration but they couldn't <laughs> give it to Christine Rose a couple <laughs> episodes ago <laughs> screw you yeah, oh, my, screw well, you <laughs> Mahinda still got to do the ending narration so yeah so Hard Knocks is all written by Rob Fresco um, and all directed by Alan Arkush. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Alan Arkush. He's well, pretty prolific and he's a producer. Well, you know, he probably, I think he's the one who directed um, that Villains episode. So, yeah, it makes sense yeah, that he yeah. would. So, yes. I will move straight on to... Some listener feedback. Some listener feedback. And they, as per usual is from our favourite English Idiot 101, Charlie. Um, she says, Our father had its good points. I actually really like the hero Claire in the past storyline, even if it messes up the timeline. Silas' story wasn't really necessary. It was really just filler. 
I'm glad Arthur died, but he didn't fulfill his villain potential. I gave up on the Pinehurst characters. It was just so boring. Jewel was better for me. I liked that Scylla was being evil again and locked the characters in Primatech. Meredith, <laughs> Meredith had a well-deserved death, finally. <laughs> I didn't like that Ando got powers, but glad that Peter got a power again. Could have been a better volume. There were too many stories in one volume for me, though. I think we agree on all those, most of those sentiments, don't you? Oh yeah, except for the Ando thing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually quite liked Meredith in this ep- this season. I didn't like. I'm not as as angry at her <laughs> like you guys are. I thought she was all right for it. It's not that I'm angry at her. It's like their direction was every time they rolled. Uh, Every time they yelled roll, it was like, look like you're a scared deer in headlights. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, cool. So the following people joined us on the live tweets. They either were tweeting along, retweeting, or faving during the episode. We have Danny Mac and Cheese, Soft underscore Guitar 60, Karayako, uh, Nerdy Alerty, Willow Paulson, English Idiot 101, Pope underscore Melissa, Sinzia 667, and Skylar Artis. Thanks for live tweeting with us. <laughs> Looks like it's time for some shameless plugs and self promotion. We'll start with the show contact info. We here at Prima Tech Files love listener feedback. If you would like to get a hold of us, we have a ton of ways. You can email us via primatechfiles at gmail.com. You can leave us a private message or interact with our posts over on facebook.com forward slash Primatech Files. We live tweet two episodes per week every Saturday starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For more information, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Primatech Files. You can also find us on Clamor, Tumblr, and YouTube by simply searching for Primatech Files. If you enjoy this podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. What's that? You don't have an iTunes account? That's okay. We're on a lot of podcaster services such as Stitcher and SoundCloud. All you have to do is search for, you guessed it, Primatech Files. We're also on Lib- Libsyn. And if you want to follow our RSS feed there, all you have to do is go to primatechfiles.libsyn.com and bookmark the site to stay up to date with this podcast. Libsyn is spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N, just in case you were wondering. We look forward to interacting with you. If you love our podcast, be sure to check out Southgate Media Group's iTunes provider page to see a list of what other podcasts are hot and trending in our network. Or you can take that one step further and visit southgatemediagroup.com, where you can find a full list of our 80 plus podcasts, along with weekly blogs and information about all the hosts. With so many podcasts that cover everything from anime to wrestling, there's sure to be tons of podcasts that can interest you. Hey guys, you should know by now that you can find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire. If you have a Tumblr, be sure to check out it's lilithhellfire.tumblr.com. And of course, be sure to swing by my blog if you are a pop culture junkie or comic book geek at littlepopculturevulture.blogspot.com. I also host several other podcasts on the Southgate Media Group Network. Some of them are The Flashpoint, Queen Consolidated and Channel 52. So if you are into, obviously, DC comic book related stuff, be sure to check it out. You can find my writings at tvbinges.com. It's a place for all your binge watching needs and you can also create your own TV binge and we'll help promote it. We do a monthly binge watch, which you're more than welcome to join in. Just go to their Twitter at tvbinges just to find out more information. You can find me on Twitter at Ricky J Diaz. That's R-I-C-K-Y-J-D-I-A-Z or Z if you're American. And now the wrap up. All right. Well, that's all we have on this edition of Prime Attack Files. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion of episode 313, Duel. It is the end of volume three, Villains. Yay! So happy. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to more in depth, happy, positive uh, conversations about the next volume. Yeah. Until we get to redemption. Yay! No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, please remember to send in some, send us some emails. Don't be afraid to interact with our Facebook post. Download the podcast, save the world. 